Without your Dara Prime on TV, your Sunday evening can be complete. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Today, I'm talking about the benefits of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Comfort is back, and she's telling us about fraud and the reason why people fall victim to fraud. Is child maintenance compelable or voluntary? Titi Lokbe, who makes a debut today, is going to explain what this means to us. Another debutant, Tolu, tells us about the stereotypes surrounding the emotions and mental health of men. And finally, Uche is stating clearly that no means no. As always, your panelists are here to share ideas aimed at provoking thoughts with no holds barred. Stay with us. Benefits of COVID-19 Allow me to be cynical. COVID-19 is one of the best things to have happened to Nigeria in a long time. Why? It proved to us that as a people, we can have the ear of our political elites. It told us that we can improve the health sector in a matter of weeks. It reassured us that the quality of service that public health facilities provide abroad can actually be available locally in Nigeria. At least a lot of people hail the COVID-19 center in Yaba. But I have two questions that I would like us to ponder on. One, how were we able to set up such number of health centers within a short time? Rockefeller Foundation spends enormously on the health sector, as does other health care financiers in the USA. According to a research data which I stumbled out online in 2003, Researchers' research and development expenditures were approximately $95 billion, with $40 billion coming from public sector and $55 billion coming from the private sources. In 2016, the research and development spending by pharmaceutical companies in the USA was estimated to be around $59 billion. I bet you get the picture. We survived COVID-19 not because government did the job, but because government had the unsolicited support of private sector, thanks to CACOVID and other partners. Globally, health sector is not strictly government business. Why do we dump everything at the doorstep of federal governments in Nigeria? In the USA, ownership of the health, health center system or healthcare system is mainly in private hands. Though federal, states, county, city governments, and all other governments have facilities, as of 2018, there were over 5,500 registered hospitals in the United States. Over 4,000 are described as community hospitals. Nigeria can never excel if we continue to dump everything at the doorstep of the federal government. We want to be like America, but we are not ready to do what pertains in America. Hold your local and state governments accountable. Get the private sector involved. Secondly, why did the government respond quickly? The government responded quickly because we became a threat to their continuous existence or survival. They all had the domestic helps and junior staff. Their families couldn't, I mean, live indoors all day. Nobody was excluded. We were all vulnerable. So the only solution was to keep you and I safe, for them to remain safe. If the elite had the option of traveling abroad, very few health facilities, if any, would have been built during this period. Now, let's juxtapose this by elections. As with COVID-19, government focuses on the population that is relevant to their continuous existence and the sustenance of their quality of life. They know the middle class and what of the elites do not have a say because they won't vote. So all they do is allow thugs man the roads and the parks, fund travel expenses of their stalwarts, and provide coverage for the touts that are used. The moment you begin to vote, you will become priority. And like COVID-19, all your needs, roads, schools, security, will be provided not because they care about you, but because they need you in order to remain comfortably in power. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs>
That is absolutely correct. Well, you know, I want to speak about the, you know, the private se sector. Yes. Now, I'm a firm believer that the private se sector will drive development in our country. If you look at even statistics, right, 70 to 80 percent of jobs are created by the private sector. Private sector, yes. You know, SMEs and even the GDP of the nation, you know, plays a, a huge role in that. Mm -hmm. However, we cannot you know, absorb government of responsibilities. True. They must create a thriving environment, an enabling environment to do business, right? Mm -hmm. Check the ease of doing business in Nigeria. The, re the, the indices are so low. You have taxation to deal with. Yeah. You have poor access or no access to capital. Mm -hmm. You have very little um, government support or infrastructure. So as a private entity, right, as a private sector organization, you're first of all fixing things that government should have fixed first. Mm. I think the agitation of the people is that can you, the federal government, right, do your own duty first of all, mm. create that enabling environment and it's easy for the private sector to then come in and do the rest or take it up from there. Yeah. But you have a very valid point that mm. when they start to believe that the middle class, um, they can win elections with the middle class, yeah. then they'll start to pay attention to some of the things that actually impact us. Impact us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, I mean, yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, that sounds very interesting. Uh, when I hear middle class, though, I start to cringe a little. <laughs> well, that's a whole conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, again, what's the percentage of the middle class, you know, compared to who you would call lower than the middle class, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, what you're saying is basically, I mean, if I'm going to sum up your, your it's saying who won't die. I mean, nobody wants to die. That's it. And I feel very, you know, importantly that, you know, the more you have, the less you want to die. Yeah, of course. Right, of so... Course. Uh, what has happened is they've gone from saying, from self-preservation to the fact that if these people also do not leave, then we cannot leave. Mm -hmm. I think it was a lot that said that if the child of the poor man did not kill you, did not He's not well fed. yesterday, he's not well fed, tomorrow he will eat you, mm -hmm. you know, basically. So I think that's what happened. That's so it's it. almost like a reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. You know, let's allow these people to leave yeah. because we want to leave. Mm -hmm. But again, if you look at the, I mean, the difference between how much was raised and how much was spent, yeah. then you start to ask yourself, um, are, they re are we really being responsible with you the know, funds? That's, that's the first it. thing. You know, the other thing then also is post-COVID, then what? So that's we set up it. all these health centers to deal with COVID. Yeah. Then after COVID, what happens? Mm -hmm. Are we... You know, then what do we start to treat? You have a valid point, but look at it also in this sense. As much as you had everything set up, you had specific hospitals who were charging triple, double, yeah. quadruple of what you're going to get the in same every abuse. other. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oxygens were being used in those hospitals. Mm -hmm. So even though you think, yes, they set up all these things. Mm -hmm. The facilities that were really required yeah. to provide the health care was not really available. available so yeah. a lot of high death rates mm -hmm. there. Oxygen was scarce everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet in certain hospitals who they were charging excess. millions, mm -hmm. who needed you to pay a certain deposit, yeah. were having access to all these things. Yeah. You see, I'm, I'm going to do a quick response, I mean, add up to what you guys have said. But I think we have comfort from Abuja. Comfort. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, in your view, um, I, I think for me the tragedy um, was the fact that even new hospitals were built. I thought that anybody with vision at that point, knowing that we already had a crisis in the healthcare system, would rather use the funds at that time to improve upon the healthcare system so at that time yeah. and then expand. Mm -hmm. So you could have had, you could go to, let's say, Amadou Bello um, University Teaching Hospital and have a section that was clearly dedicated to COVID. Mm -hmm. And, but then the whole hospital would have, you know, been able to, you know, partake Benefits. from the funds that came in. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is what is going to keep on being our problem. Yeah. This crisis of leadership, this lack of vision, yeah. lack of focus, lack on, of understanding. And as I, one of the, um, one of um, the yeah. panelists said um, judicious use of finances. Funds. I mean, this is not our money. People gathered money, gave you, at least you would use it with some, True. you know, with some sense. And, um, you, you know, I, I like the cynicism, you know, what has come out of COVID because the truth about it is that nothing has changed. Nothing. Money came in, people used it, spent it. Yeah. I mean, we struggled to reach 3,000 deaths. 
mm. in the whole, I mean, as much as they struggle to add, give us numbers that we were dying and going to be decimated by this day, and so all this money was needed. Mm. Uh, okay, faith, God, the universe, science, something, you shall kept those numbers down. So oh, I think they yeah. ought to be ashamed of themselves and, at and, this point. And I think, like you rightly said, right, and that's one thing, and that's one thing we've been grappling with for a long time, which is why I wrote this speech, that listen, all this thing comes back to the government and how the government feels us. But I'd like us to look at the Rockefeller Foundation bit. Now, we know we have issues in our healthcare system. What will it, what will it cost? I don't want to use Dangote. He's doing too, too many things. There are so many other companies around. So let's say, but let's use a Dangote as an example. Let's use Dangote, definitely, yeah. yes. Now, if he comes in and says, okay, Federal Medical Center, Bayosa or Abuja or Lagos, anywhere, I'm going to take up the salary or not even salary, I'm going to give some freebies to some doctors, additional whatever, maybe some allowances every month. So doctors that work between this time and this time, this is what they get. So in addition to whatever the government is giving to them, all what our doctors need is motivation. I was in the clinic two days ago with my, just to get immunization for my child, and there was a nurse there, and a senior nurse got angry, where is this nurse going to? She should come here and join me, because they were already on the staff. Then another person came out and said, sorry, she's going to do circumcision. So a nurse that's supposed to be attending to kids who came for immunization had to leave that post to quickly go attend to some I mean, uh, circumcised uh, whatever. But we still have a lot of doctors who would not have left Nigeria if they could get well paid. So we know government has failed. And I think it's that time we come to that reality that our government has failed. Yeah. But what can we now do in our, to, to, to favor ourselves, not the government now, yes. just to make sure that the health is getting better. But you see... When it comes to health, we can talk on and on. But anyway, let's go to the next bit. But before that, I'd like to say, please continue to wash your hands, wear a mask, stay safe, practice social distancing. And up next is comfort. Stay tuned.